Welcome to the Daily Debrief. I'm Sina Tsukara Tsuboy here with CNET News Weber.com editor Rafe Needleman. And this is the stuff out of a science fiction novel, truly. We're yes. talking about internet networking in outer space. Yeah, well, if you're going to space, you need the internet, right? <laughs> oh, obviously. You've got to do some online shopping. Actually, what, what is happening here is, is more important than that. It's about uh, building a reliable, scalable, easy to develop mm -hmm. for platform that uh, the spacecraft can use to transmit their scientific and other data back and forth. Why can't we just use the model that we use on Earth up in space? Why won't that work? Uh, well, the space, the, the Earth model is assumes a pretty robust fabric of connected nodes, right. where you have a, a, a device at one end sending to information to a device at the other end, mm -hmm. and both the nodes are kind of responsible for the communication, and the ones in the middle, while the internet is very smart and, and routes data around, um, are not very robust if you don't have an end-to-end -end connection. Sure. Uh, as the people I talked to at NASA said about this, packets drop on the floor. <laughs> if, if, if there's no straight path, if there's no path at all between point A and point B, the communication just doesn't happen. And in space, where you've got satellites and orbiters and things picking up data and, and just transmitting a lot of scientific data, maybe without the storage to hold it all, they, they can't have that. Sure. So what NASA is doing, uh, and this is part of a long 10-year process, is they're building something called the Disruption Tolerant Network, or DTN, which assumes a different type of fabric of intermediate relay stations mm -hmm. or routers. And what they do is they're storing forward. They take data in and they hang on to it until they know they have a, a, a solid connection to the next step, and then they transmit it. And I imagine that has something to do with the distance, the big distances in space between these nodes that are connecting. It has to do with both distance and orbital mechanics. <laughs> it is, <Or> that. <laughs> it, well, first of all, I mean, you're right. I mean, it takes a long time. It yeah. can't take, you know, minutes or hours for information to get from point A to uh, anywhere else mm -hmm. because you're transmitting over, you know, light hours or light minutes. Yeah. Uh, but also everything's moving. So the, the communications have to be scheduled because the antennas have to point at each other. And all the devices have to be aware of where their receivers mm -hmm. are and what can go wrong. And what happens is when a receiver then picks up this data, it sends a note back and the sender of it, you know, in this hop of this chain of, of communications, doesn't release custody of the data until it knows it's been transmitted successfully. So what you have is a fabric, what, what NASA's building is a network of um, disruption tolerant, fault tolerant, lag tolerant uh, intermediates mm -hmm. that can kind of guarantee the transmission of data from point A to point B, which the internet, while it actually works in practice, doesn't do that in theory, you it's don't get not, that guarantee. It's, no, you don't. Right, absolutely. Yeah. So they're building this fabric on the ground right now, but when do we actually get to take it to space and right. test it and see if it works? Well, they just did test it. Oh, uh, they just okay. finished a test. The, um, the spacecraft called EPOXI, which is an acronym of acronyms, E-P-O-X-I. Okay. Um, that was a, the, the spaceship that dropped the, um, the deep impact probe off to smash into the comet in 2005. Mm -hmm. It's looping back around to uh, shoot back to the comet in 2010 to do some more uh, visual readings and stuff like that. But in, in that kind of hibernation and sleep cycle, they've reconfigured the radios to be a node on this DTN. Oh, cool. And they're testing it nice. as with si sending simulated pictures to see if it, if it works uh, if the protocol works as advertised. Uh -huh. okay. So they just did that test and it was a success. It was the only node in space. All the other nine nodes of this 10 node test network were on, on oh, here on Earth. Okay. But apparently it's working and they hope to um, build DTN networks into all the spacecraft that will be involved in future moon missions about mm -hmm. uh, 2015 to 16 and the Mars sample return, which is going to be a massive undertaking, multinational undertaking, both yeah. you know sending spacecraft to Mars, getting them off there and back here and, and all the, you know, data that's going to come back mm -hmm. um, probably in about 2025. Okay, cool. That's when we could really see a big network out in space, many different nodes all talking to each other. We hope so. We it's, hope so. Just, yeah. <laughs> Very cool. Thank you so much. Pleasure. Yeah. CNET News, Webware.com editor and closet space nerd, Ray oh, Needleman. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Cara Boy. We'll see you in the next Daily Debrief.